What's up everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Bonsai U. This time around we're going to be talking about the history and meaning of Shinpaku Juniper Bonsai. One of the questions that I get asked more than just about anything is what is a Shinpaku Juniper Bonsai? What does the term Shinpaku mean? Where does it come from? And what does it apply to? Well, we're going to answer all of those questions in this episode of Bonsai U. Now, you might be asking yourselves, why on earth are you standing next to a native U.S. Juniper if we're going to be talking about Shinpaku Juniper? Well, by the end of this tutorial, I think that's going to make a bit more sense. But before we talk about that, I want to dive into the meaning and history of Shinpaku Juniper in Japan. The term Shinpaku is actually a relatively new term in the Japanese language. It was developed in the latter part of the 19th century, and it was really developed essentially by people who do bonsai. So it's a bonsai specific word. If you were to go out into the general public, even now in Japan, and mention the word Shinpaku, most people wouldn't know what it is unless you actually wrote out the kanji characters for it. So to break down the two characters, you have Shin and Haku, which becomes Paku when you combine it together. So Shinpaku. Now Shin translates essentially to authentic and haku in this case translates to cypress or something in the cypress family. Now juniperus which is the genus of shinpaku juniper here is in the cypress family the same as camasipris or hinoki cypress and many other conifers that we work with in bonsai. Now if you look across Japan from the far north to the far south you're going to find a range of juniperus trees that are referred to as shinpaku. Now it's not that all trees in the juniperus genus are shinpaku it's trees that are specifically Juniperus chinensis, or trees that have this sort of scale-like foliage to them. So these would be things like Hokkaido Shinpaku from up north. Again, Juniperus chinensis Hokkaido would be the variety. You'll find Juniperus chinensis Itoigawa, which is this right here. This is from a very specific region in Japan, which we're going to talk about in a little bit more detail here. You also have Juniperus chinensis Kishu, which is from the Wakayama area. And then you move further south into Shikoku, and you'll find other Juniperus chinensis varieties that occur in that particular area there. So the term Shinpaku really just refers to, in Japanese, trees that are in that Juniperus chinensis species range of any variety from the north of Japan to the south of Japan. Now there's a little bit of a debate that I've seen online about how to write and pronounce the word Shinpaku. So again, if you look at the two components of the word, you have Shin, S-H-I-N, and Haku, which becomes Paku when you combine them together. Now in the Japanese language, there is no M sound by itself. There is an M sound when you follow it by certain vowels, so you have Mami Mume Mo, but there is no M sound by itself. So when you combine the word together, Shinpaku, it's still an N in the middle, Shinpaku. But when you roll the N into the P, in Japanese it actually does become kind of an M sound. So it can be written and it is pronounced as Shinpaku with an M. It's quite interesting, I think. So the original Shinpaku that would have been collected in Japan would have been trees that were from the island of Shikoku. It's kind of south central Japan. It's also the area that's famous now in the bonsai community for Takamatsu or the city where there are a lot of bonsai professionals who have kind of come together to build different bonsai villages. You have Kinashi Bonsai Village and Kokobunji Bonsai Village. Now on Shikoku, Shikoku originally was very famous for its Akamatsu red pine and Kuromatsu or the black pine and it's still very famous for those species today. But what a lot of people don't know is that the original Shinpaku were all collected on the island of Shikoku by certain collectors, one in particular, a fellow named Tahe Suzuki, who we'll talk a little bit more about later in this story. Now, those guys who were collecting down there were collecting, of course, the Shikoku Shinpaku, and you really don't see hardly any of those in the bonsai world in Japan these days. As a matter of fact, they were over collected at the beginning, and there really aren't any good examples left in the mountains of Shikoku, which is why you don't see them anymore 
anymore in the bonsai world of Japan. Now, guys like Tahei Suzuki, because those shimpaku were running out on Shikoku, decided to travel around to the rest of Japan to see if they could find other examples of good shimpaku with good foliage types and good trunks. And Tahei Suzuki himself was the one who actually discovered the most famous type of shimpaku in the bonsai world, and that is the Itoigawa shimpaku, which we're gonna dive into next. The Itoigawa shimpaku is perhaps the most sought after species for bonsai in Japan. Its characteristically fine foliage, striated deadwood, and twisting trunk line make it the perfect candidate for bonsai culture. In the early 20th century, on a return trip from Hokkaido to Shikoku, Yamadori collector Tahei Suzuki spotted Mount Kurohime, or the Black Princess Mountain, from a distance and decided to traverse it in search of the perfect shimpaku specimen. Little did he know this would lead to the discovery of a lifetime. Down a ravine on Kurohime, Suzuki spotted a patch of shimpaku juniper with incredible gnarled deadwood trunks and fine compact foliage. He immediately began collecting the trees and selling them as Yamadori bonsai in the nearby town of Itoigawa in Niigata Prefecture. This is where the name Itoigawa originates as it's applied to Juniperus chinensis collected in this area. In addition to Mount Kurohime, the nearby Mount Myoji also proved to be fertile ground for collecting excellent shimpaku specimens. These two became known as Itoigawa shimpaku, though their foliar characteristics were slightly different than those plants collected on Mount Kurohime. In addition to Mount Kurohime and Mount Myoji, this nearby area here called the Kurobe Gorge would have been another location where collectors like Tahei Suzuki would have come in the early 20th century in search of Itoigawa Shimpaku Juniper. Now the naturally occurring variety in this particular gorge here was something called the Uozu Shimpaku. And apparently it had foliar characteristics similar to that of the Myoji Shimpaku over on Mount Myoji in terms of it being very fine, very soft. And of course the trunks allegedly had very beautiful movement with powerful deadwood. Unfortunately though, this area was also overcollected, just like Kurohime and Myoji, so there really aren't any good examples of the Uozu Shimpaku left in this area, but it's still a beautiful area to come, spectacular natural views here, and I'm glad I'm able to share it with you guys. So this town that we're walking through here is actually along the Kurobe Gorge. This is what's called the Unazuki Onsen Town. It's an area that's very famous for its onsen or hot springs, and it's very likely that guys like Tahei Suzuki, after collecting the mountains here, they would have come down and relaxed in the hot springs, or at least that's what I like to think. Now this tree right here at Eisei, and this is an example of an Itoigawa Shinpaku Juniper. As a matter of fact, it's kind of a mix of two varieties from Japan. So first and foremost, the trunk was actually originally collected in the mountains of Wakayama. It was a, or is, a Kishu Shinpaku. So Juniperus chinensis variety Kishu. Now the Kishu foliage tends to be a little bit sort of chunky, heavier, a uh, bit more of a bluish color. Some people like it, some people don't. It also is a little bit more susceptible to mite attacks and to internal dieback during the summer months. It sheds that internal growth in favor of the external growth. So to offset that and improve the foliage type on the tree, I've actually grafted this tree with Itoigawa foliage. Now you'll notice here we have a couple of approach grafts that were recently applied here. We also have approach grafts that have already taken from previous years on the tree and we're slowly replacing the original Kishu foliage with new Itoigawa foliage. So here's the Kishu foliage out here on the extremities and this is the tight Itoigawa foliage on the interior here. Now this naturally occurring variety of Itoigawa here was cultivated for its very tight fine foliage. It's actually much tighter than a lot of the Itoigawas that you'll find that are naturally collected. So this is sort of a cultivated version of the naturally occurring Itoigawa variety. It was artificially selected from nature and then propagated to produce this beautiful foliage here. So this foliage in particular is very tight, very compact, beautiful fluorescent green. It doesn't die back on the interior. It's not very susceptible at all to mite infestations and it doesn't really get tip blight or other fungal issues either. So to me this is one of the best cultivated versions of Itoigawa foliage which is why we're grafting it on this tree here. <music> 
Now this here is also a cultivated version of Itoegawa Shinpaku, but this is from a different naturally occurring variety. So there are different foliar characteristics on this tree. It's a little bit leggier and longer than the last Itoegawa that we just took a look at. And it tends to run a little bit more, meaning it puts out these elongating shoots. So it doesn't matter what species of juniper you're working with, you're going to find a spectrum from coarse to fine within that given species or naturally occurring variety. So this this is true for Itoegawa, for Kishu, for Rocky Mountain junipers here in the States, for example, Utah junipers, Sabina junipers in Spain and in Europe. You'll find a massive range there in terms of the fineness or coarseness of the foliage. Now, what I recommend when you're selecting a foliage type for a specific juniper, say for example, you're grafting, what you want to do is make sure that you're grafting a foliage type that matches the size of the tree. So in other words, you wouldn't want to graft super fine, tight, tight foliage on a massive plant. You you want to look for something that has a little bit more coarseness to it so when you graft it onto that larger tree it looks a bit more natural now if you're doing a small tree like a shohin size tree of course you want to find the finest most beautiful tight foliage that you can possibly find to utilize for that small tree so proportionality is very very important but just keep in mind when you're selecting a specific cultivar variety of juniper for use in bonsai you're going to have that spectrum from fine to coarse foliage so this brings me back to our original discussion. Why would I be standing next to an American juniper, a Rocky Mountain juniper here in a discussion about shimpaku? Well, the modern use of the word shimpaku has actually been expanded to include trees from overseas, from different parts of the world that have a similar scale-like foliage to the Juniperus chinensis. So if you were to show a photo of this tree right here, which is a Rocky Mountain juniper, to a Japanese bonsai professional, they would refer to this as a Rocky Mountain shimpaku or American shimpaku. They would refer to this in the same manner as they would be referring to the Itoegawa or the Kishu or any other Juniperus chinensis from Japan. Now, of course, this isn't Juniperus chinensis. This is Juniperus scopulorum, so totally different species, but it's still within that Juniperus genus, and it still has that scale-like foliage, which is why it would be referred to as a shimpaku in Japanese. Now, there's another term, tosho, which refers to Juniperus rigida, which is a needle juniper in Japan. That would be applied to our American common juniper juniper or the common juniper that you find basically all over the northern hemisphere that would be referred to as American Tosho or American common juniper or American needle juniper basically so there are parallels across all continents with all of these different species similarities and of course differences as well but that word shimpaku is now used basically as a catch-all for all trees that are juniperous that have that scale like foliage all right, so I hope that that clears up a little bit of the confusion around the word shimpaku and that it makes it a bit more clear as to how to apply the word to certain species in bonsai culture. I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this episode of Bonsai U. If you like what we do here, make sure to like and subscribe down below. And if you really want to support us, you can click on the link in the description down below. It'll bounce you over to my website and you can make a donation to help Bonsai U going forward. Thank you guys so much for checking out this episode and we'll see you guys next time around. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.